Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Mark Chalmers from Energy Fuels. How are you today, Mark? I'm great, Tracy. How are you? I am, of course, like everybody else, watching the news. And we both know that all of us are looking at energy options in our portfolio. So how about we start there with how does the Russian invasion in the Ukraine affect energy fuels? Well, uh, look, it's, it's complicated, right? I mean, I think you're aware that, you know, going back three, four years ago, uh, our company was uh, sounding the alarm bells on the dependency on both Russia and Kazakhstan for uranium imports into the United States. It kind of fell uh, largely on deaf ears, and there wasn't a lot of response to that. And here we are today. Uh, one, one thing that's happened is I, I think that a lot of the utilities around the world are in a pickle. They're in a pickle because now they're, they've become so dependent on um, you know, those regions uh, that it, you know, what do you do? What do you do? What's the next move? So look, um, it is what it is. Um, our company doesn't want to say, we told you so. Um, we just have to, to do what we can uh, to work with the utilities to help uh, work out these issues as we go forward. I mean, it, we, we are dependent. The country uh, is dependent. The world is dependent. And uh, I think there's got to be some recognition that there needs to be some transition. It can't happen overnight to cut off those supply sources. It's, it's too significant in the world. But it's got to be a transition for the right reasons. Well, it's my understanding as well that you have experience in Kazakhstan. So you know what you're talking about here. Um, would you like to expand any further on the uranium production coming out of Kazakhstan or Russia's involvement in Kazakhstan presently? Yeah, um, I'm currently an expert witness in, on Kazakhstan, and I've done work with some major law firms uh, in the world in that regard and worked with BHP and Rio Tinto and Marabini uh, and Cameco uh, in Kazakhstan. Um, so look, it's a, a great uh, jurisdiction in terms of uranium endowment and, and from an operating cost. Uh, and as you know, between Kazanoprop and the Russians, uh, you know, they, they own the majority of the uranium produced in Kazakhstan. In Russia, there's lesser uranium produced in, in, in Russia proper, but they do a, a lot of the enrichment and the nuclear fuel products after that, the value adds. So, so they're very connected, um, but it's very complicated. And as I said, the world has become uh, connected and addicted to uh, Russian uh, and Kazakh material. Approximately 50% of the world's requirements come out of those two countries. And just flipping to the U.S. for a moment, it's my understanding that the domestic supply of uranium that we use is only 5%. Is that correct? It's probably way less than that, Tracy. With the prices that you know we've seen over the last uh, four or five years, it's basically gone to zero. Energy Fuels has been the largest producer in that declining market. But um, you know it's it's effectively zero, even though we still produce uranium at White Mesa. So I you know I think that's changing. I mean, you look at the price of uranium has gone up dramatically in this last week. You know, it's it's got a five handle on it, so it's in the low fifties. And uh, I think that the you know recognition that uh, you know securing supplies of uranium um, in other locations a little more friendly to. Some of the utilities is becoming an increased focus, and I think you're going to see some activity. So let's uh, basically draw a line under this. And, you know, so how is energy fuels positioned to help fill any deficits or gaps in supply that arise from any interruptions in the world supply of uranium from Kazakhstan and Russia, based on what I'm hearing? And just to clarify to investor intel audience members out there and Americans dedicated to sustainability, it's my understanding that energy fuels, you're not an exploration play. You got 100 million in the bank and you are producing uranium and you, what can you do for us? Well, look, we can help uh, fill some of that gap. Uh, we can't fill all of it. I mean, when you look at the sort of the hiatus of production around the world because of low prices, uh, you know, people have to restart and that takes time. I mean, our role is basically supplying um, the, the yellow cake 
um, material, and then it has to go for conversion and enrichment. So those are other steps that we have no involvement with. So, you know, it's, it's really that full integration and how do you respond with that full integration uh, in a reasonable time frame? And so we're, we're all basically caught sort of on our backside um, through all these steps of the integration of the nuclear fuel products required for reactors. So, uh, you know, it, it is, um, it, you know, as I said, it's a pickle. I don't know how to better explain it. The world is in a, in a pickle here, um, and we're going to have to figure out how to get ourselves out. It's not too dissimilar to what you've seen in the rare earth industry with China. It's just with the, you know, different country or countries. So, Mark, if you could just basically... Uh, you know, I know it's tough being in a position where you are right about things that are a little bit unpleasant, but can you tell us what we should anticipate, say, in the next coming months as shareholders with regards to your uranium production and news flow? Well, I think what you'll hear from a news flow perspective, a lot of it's going to be dependent on how this all uh, shakes out, uh, you know, in Russia and Ukraine and and even in Kazakhstan, I mean, it wasn't very long ago that there was this, you know, this this um, upheaval in in Kazakhstan. So, look, I, I mean, we're already looking at all our projects, figuring out, uh, you know, which projects we want to would want to bring online first. Uh, looking at the economics of that, um, and and looking at how we would stage uh, going back into production very soon this year. Uh, there's a lot of things though that are happening in the world, and one of them's inflation. Things like uh, reagents and, and and equipment and you know people. Now, fortunately, we we have some really quality people working for us. So, the the news flow on the uranium front uh, will be will be driven on sort of what's happening in, in in Russia and the price of uranium. But we are very much behind the scenes getting our projects ready so that we can respond quickly. And in the case of White Mesa, we have uranium at the mill that could be processed in short order. In a few months time, we could be processing uranium at the White Mesa. And that's probably the closest to market than anything in the United States. Well, on that note, for all of you out there that are undoubtedly more interested in energy fuels as a result of this particular interview, thank you so much for your update, uh, Mark. And uh, here is the website for you to go to and do your due diligence. Thank you for joining us, Mark. Thank you.